So does anybody remember this? You may have seen it if you've watched any of my earlier lessons. It's something that I found when I was out exploring a field that's nearby my house and I got really excited about it. Um, and I wanted to cut it open, but I decided not to. And I will show you how I figured out what it was. Hello friends and welcome to Science Time with Ms. Dwyer. It's a beautiful day. I'm so excited that the sun came out today. I thought that I would start to identify some of the things that I've been seeing. And there's a great app out there for those of you who have access to um, an, a phone or um, an iPad that helps us identify things and it's called Seek. So I wanted to share that with you today. It's very cool. It's made by something called iNaturalist, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in a minute. But Seek is a really great app because it helps us to identify things around us in the natural world. Animals, plants, fungi like mushrooms, all kinds of really cool things you can identify with Seek. As always, if you would like to download the app onto one of your devices, make sure to ask your parents for permission or whoever it is that cares for you at home. That's always really important. Now Seek is a very safe app if there's any parents who are watching this. The thing I love about Seek is that it does not collect data on us. So we use it on our device, but it's not going to take that data and share it with anybody publicly. So let me show you a little bit about what it looks like and how it works. So I'm going to show you how to use the app to identify a species. I'm going to go to my Seek app. It's going to open up. Looks like this. And um, there's a couple things on the screen. We could talk about challenges in a moment. The most important one is this camera icon right here, because this is how the app identifies uh, something in your environment. So as soon as it's, it's going to ask for um, permission and also to give me a couple warnings and make sure that it's not dangerous, things like that. So I've read this. I already read it before. I'm going to say continue. So now it's going to give me some directions which will say down here, it'll say to keep scanning the environment. Now the other thing is, it's already got it. Once it gets it, it comes up with the name right up here. And also all of these dots will fill. If it's struggling, only maybe a dot or two will, will fill. But once it's got it, you can take a picture. And then it's going to take you to this page. So it's showing me what this is. The name of this plant is a Japanese Andromeda. It's showing me that I've already seen this once before. And it's going to give me more information if I want to. So I'm going to go to the view species to get a little bit more info. And there's some good information here. You can scroll down for as much as you like. I think what's most important is this one right here. It says that it's introduced. That means that this plant originally was not from Massachusetts. Not this particular plant, but all Japanese Andromedas. They came from elsewhere. I would, I would guess they came from Japan, but I could be wrong about that. This is really good information because it tells us what are species that are from here, types of plants and animals from Massachusetts and New England, and which ones have been introduced, have been brought in from somewhere else in the country or from somewhere else in the world. So I'm gonna show you uh, another one a plant that I think it might struggle with a little bit. So let's see what it does when it struggles. So what you can see there is it's filled up three of these dots. You may not be able to see it because they blend in, but only three of these dots are filled. And there's the word dicot and class up there, but it hasn't yet found out exactly what this is. Down here, it'll say, try different angles until you, until you can get the identification to species. That means the specific type of plant that this is. So what I'll do is I'll kind of move my camera around and take pictures of different parts of the buds, oops, um, of the stems, the twigs that it's connected to. Sometimes I'll go all the way into the trunk to try to get it. Now I bet you can guess why the app is struggling with this particular plant. It's still pretty early in the spring. Oh, it's trying. It's still pretty early in the spring. And so there may not be enough features 
that are out on this for the app to identify this plant. So we want to look for things that we can see more of the features. So here's one that may look familiar. Let's see. Let's see if I can get my app to work with this. So I'm going to turn on the camera feature. And it's going to start looking around. Oh, I think it's already got it. Yes, it does. I know I'm part way out. Wild daffodil. I didn't know that was a wild flower. So that's really interesting, at least for me. So view species. Again, this is something that was introduced. So it may be wild, but it was actually brought to here in New England um, from someplace else. Some plants are what we call invasive species. Now invasive species are ones that have invaded. Now that sounds a little scary. They're plants, so don't worry. But what it means is something that has come into our habitat that maybe has an advantage here. Perhaps it doesn't have the same predators as it had in its home country. For some reason it grows and takes over. So it's something that we actually would like to get rid of. So a very common invasive species is garlic mustard. And this is the time of year when garlic mustard is coming up all over the place. There's nothing dangerous about garlic mustard. The only thing that's negative about it is that it tends to take over any habitat that it settles in here in New England. For example, along the edges of roadsides, along the edges of the fells, we see in the trails, we'll see lots of garlic mustard and as it spreads into the woods and the fields, it pretty much takes over. So at this time of year, one of the things we like to do with permission is to go out to public places and to our own, outside of our own homes and pull up some of those invasive species. Again, you'd wanna do that with a family member or somebody who can give you permission to do so, but it's a good thing to do. You'd be actually helping out your community and the habitat as a whole. One fun way to get started with SEEK is to do a challenge. There's a citizen science challenge going on right now where you can go outside your home and observe uh, 10 species and earn a badge. So that's a great way to get started. If you'd like to take it further, you can speak to your family about becoming involved in the City Nature Challenge from iNaturalist. It's a great challenge, but it requires a login. So it's something that you would want to talk to your parents or whoever cares, with, cares for you about. So what is our mystery object? I'm gonna to try to use the Seek app to figure it out. So let's see, I'm gonna open the app on my phone. Um, let's go back, I was just at my wild daffodil. Open my camera and I'm gonna scan it. Now, whoa, let's get it in front of the camera. Let's see, oh, look at that. It's starting to figure it out. It says it's a Mantid. Now, obviously, I'm not in its environment because I took it home with me. Um, so I brought my seek app out to the field where I found it, and I actually had a lot more success getting a little closer to the identification. But we will take a picture as it is now, and it's telling me it's an Arizona mantis. So this is actually the egg case of a species of praying mantis. So I'm really glad that I didn't cut it open because I don't know if it's an actual live egg case or if it's something left over from the year before. Now again, if you want more information, we go to the view species. It's gonna tell us a little bit about it. They'll also have other pictures from other people up here. Um, if we, and it'll show us its range and things like that. So I was super excited about that. I can't wait to go back to that field and see if I can find little baby praying mantises out once the weather just warms up a tiny bit more. Because right now, a lot of what they eat is not out yet. So that's a really fun way to use this app, especially if there's something mysterious out there and you don't know exactly what it is. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and happy Earth Day to everyone. Please get outside, enjoy your world, and I hope you enjoy learning something about it today.